Hey everyone, and welcome back to Today in Tech. I know that we haven't been live in quite a bit and we're super excited about it. I'm Julia Beauchamp and I'm here with Macworld senior writer, Michael Simon, as well as Computer World executive editor, Ken Mingus. We're going to be discussing the upcoming iOS release, iOS 14.5. If you have any questions as we're going along, feel free to send them in the chat. They'll get sent along to me and we'll do our best to answer them. So Mike, Ken, 14.5, iOS 14.5 is going to be a pretty big update. There's a lot of heavily anticipated features that are going to be happening. So what are they? Mike, let's go to you. All right. Well, hi. I love when you go to Mike first. It's great. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, wave, pleasantries. Um, yeah, 14.5, um, it's a it's a bit of a of a of a big mid cycle release. I mean, Apple used to do these back in the day. Every now and again we get one of these releases where it's not just bug fixes and, and optimization. There's like there's a couple of, of huge-ish forward-facing features that people are going to notice. A couple of real big ones in this one. So uh, we'll, we'll start with the with the not so fun stuff, and that has to do with privacy. So back when it, it I announced, think that's a super fun. I was just going to say, what makes you think this isn't so well, fun? I, mean, I think, I think this it's is great. The, this is the most important part of the whole thing. I didn't say important. I said fun. Okay, <laughs> there's a difference. Private, privacy is not boring. Go. I'll be quiet. <laughs> okay, so um, iOS 14.5 is going to push live Apple's um, app tracking transparency. We, this was previously announced and, and it was delayed, presumably to give developers a bit of time to either uh, uh, adjust their apps accordingly or just kind of figure out what the next steps are. What, wh what this is, is so most people aren't even aware that this happens, but the apps on our phone also websites, but we're, this is just for apps. They're, they're tracking us. We, we kind of know that when we use Facebook, when we use um, Twitter or something like that, that when we use that app, we're, we're signing in and we're, we're agreeing to a bunch of things. And among those things are, you know, we're, we're the, what we do, who we follow, what we post, those things are being tracked. However, they also track things outside of that app. And where are we are able to turn those things off and to limit that stuff it's not clear it's not transparent and you have to really dive into the settings to get to those toggles and you never really know if it's working or if it did it or if what so what apple's doing now is when these apps update you're going to get a box just like you get a box when uh, you download an app and it says can you use the microphone or can we use the the, the camera or okay, can we make calls yeah. right yeah. location yeah yeah and it, it'll specifically say can this app track your uh, stuff or track your whatever outside of the app? And you can just say, no, don't allow. And that's it, it shuts it off. Now that's great for people who are privacy minded. It's great for Apple who's pushing the iPhone as a privacy first phone. It's not right. so great for Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg, yeah. Facebook. <laughs> and they're, Facebook's already fighting I back. I mean, that's the one that's the most obvious, of course, but yes, mm -hmm. clearly. Yeah, right. It's not just Facebook. There's lots of these, these companies, companies that we wouldn't be surprised that probably do it. But Facebook's the big one. They're you know, a multi-billion dollar corporation with, with billions of active users and ads all over the place. So they've already taken out uh, full page ads in major newspapers saying that this is going to be bad for consumers because you won't get ads... Uh, um, uh, you won't get ads from small businesses. Targeted ads. So the it'll thing, yeah. it'll it'll yeah. affect small businesses on the web and 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 the places that you like. And I mean, maybe there's an argument to be had there. It seems a bit disingenuous, and it also seems that Facebook could figure out something that's not so invasive and still protect these small businesses if that's what they truly care about. Did you did you see the Tim Cook statement last week where yeah. he said yeah. base he did not use the word Facebook as I recall. But he talked about the, the old the old story that you know you are the product, and he and Apple right. doesn't want you, well, you know, Apple users to be the product here. Let me let me ask you something in terms of app tracking and how it crosses across apps, because I'm I mean obviously I, I understand how cookies work on a web web page yeah. web browser mm -hmm. going from site to site. You know the ads that show up, you click on one thing, and then every time you go to another site, you get the same ad. Is that what's going on between yeah. apps? It's the same sort of thing. It's collecting data on what you're doing in different apps and then sending it back to HQ, whichever HQ it is. And then that's building a profile against mm -hmm. which the ads are served to you. Is that exactly right? Yeah. In roughly? fact, in, okay. in, 
in, as part of this as part of this new um, uh, feature, whatever you want to call it, system, uh, apps will still be able to track you within their own apps. So Facebook right. will still be able to see what you post and who you like and, and all that stuff. They just can't go outside of their little sandbox to do it. So to say that this is going to decimate small businesses is, you know, it's a little bit disingenuous because Facebook has tons of information that it has on its own. It doesn't need mm. to go out to, you know, Google and, and, and Pinterest or wherever it's going to get more stuff, but it wants to. And that's how it's so big. And that's why it's such a massive network. And that's why because of that data, because it knows so much about us. I mean, well, people say that, you know, jokingly, but they say like, you know, I was talking to my friend about this thing and all of a sudden an ad appeared on Facebook. Like right, Facebook right, knows right. so much about us. It's, mm -hmm. it's all over the place. And this is going to severely limit uh, its access because, hey, there's like a billion iPhone users. It is the largest platform in, in the world, the, the, the largest hardware platform in the world. And Facebook wants all that data. You know, but just, just sure. to make a point, though, Apple's not turning this off. All Apple is doing it's is putting, the option. Right. It's it's right. putting the option to turn it off in front of yeah. users. But that option users may opt before. not to. Now the they might. Yeah, the, they might. The I operating don't, assumption. At least you know, at least half are going to say, "Well, I don't want that." And right. They're going to shut it off. Yeah. It's not something that people would know. It, if you called up uh, uh, your mom, say, and said, "Hey, uh, Facebook is looking at everything that you do on your phone, and you can turn that off." Don't you think she would? Yeah. Yeah, people I've, just don't I've know tried that to you tell can her do that yeah. if she knows how to do it. And of course, this <laughs> is she the knows point. how to do it. Yeah, and because it's not, you... it's not right. that Apple's made it purposefully difficult to find. It's just that it hasn't developed this system yet. So what yeah. this is going to do is going to create a new tab in settings. It's going to bring it right to the forefront. It's going to make it real transparent and real easy to see what's, have, uh, uh, what's happening, just like it does with uh, location surfaces. Same thing. I'm looking forward right. to that. I mean, I, I will yeah. turn it off. I mean, again, I think most people are privacy minded and don't I mean, want... maybe, you know, yeah, I think so. Um, maybe over time, the systems will, you know, correct themselves and, and, and Facebook will figure out a way to do it in their own little fiefdom without going outside of it. But, you know, everyone thought that location services was going to decimate our phone as well. And you know, we found out that that's kind of important. <laughs> you know, it's 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 not so such a bad thing when uh, you go to a map app and it immediately knows where you are and you know things like that. So, you know, I, I think that Apple's taking a, a great step, and I think that the, the developers now need to figure out how to you know still create that the the, the type of experience they want to create, but you know, in a, in a in a different way. Right. Okay. Great for consumer privacy. Yeah. Maybe not great for small businesses, but I think also once that once it's um, more sort of shoved in your face that you have this option, perhaps more people would take advantage of it. Like you said, Mike, it's a bit difficult to find. Yeah. These specific and it's settings. also people don't just don't know it's there. You yeah, know, even exactly. if, even if they, even if they were to find it, like, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's just not clear what it does or why you would want to turn it off and things like that. So yeah. Uh, I don't personally think it's going to be bad for small businesses. I think it's bad for big businesses. And I think it's a good thing that Apple is um, pushing this out. That, totally. But that's only one of the features we should note. You know, with 14.5, it's a big one. And yeah. it, it, will, it does mm -hmm. have ramifications. But uh, I have to admit, when I, when I saw the reports of all that was going to be in 14.5, the big thing for me was the being able to unlock your iPhone with a mask on. You know, yeah, I realized that's a, that that's... <laughs> uh, such a pain. A bit overdue, but um, hugely welcome. We, we should point out that Apple hadn't actually announced any of this. So it, right. there's a there's a developer beta um, right. that that just landed on Tuesday and everyone you know they they we're going on reports of yeah. what people are saying um, the public beta will probably land uh, my guess is next week at which point there will probably be a press release that outlines all these things and maybe there'll be um, some more stuff that that isn't there yet and then anybody who's watching you can tell if we're right or wrong at that point we'll know. I know I mean it's <laughs> it's it's not so much that that it's not going to happen like all these things are going to happen like the like the, the the beta is out there. Uh, but for anyone who's on the public beta, the reason why you're not seeing it is because Apple hasn't pushed that uh, to the to the wider market yet. But that's it, all, all these things are coming prob probably next week is my guess. The, the one question I had about the uh, unlocking your iPhone with a face mask on is that it also requires that you have an Apple watch, which, well, yeah. which I don't have now. So it's not it going to work for me. Yeah, your, what, your Samsung that, watch is useless. What's, no, it's not Samsung. <laughs> it's, it's Garmin. Uh, moved on. Uh, no, but the thing is, what's the what's what's with the watch? Is that just an extra level of security to prove that you're you somehow? Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, so when you put on your watch, it's automatically authenticated um, with your phone and yourself and all that stuff. So when you when you go to lock, so if you're in a store and you're wearing a mask and they, you go to unlock your phone, first your phone will identify that you have a mask on. Then when that happens, it, if you've turned on this feature, it will send a, a message to the watch and the watch will send a message back to the phone from what I read instantaneously that says, yes, this is you. It's okay, unlock it and boom, and, and, and you're there. Whether you're looking at notifications or, or you're swiping up to get to the home screen, it, it, it's all the same, um, the same system. Now, it's only for this specific purpose. So in other instances, you'll still, you're still gonna need face ID or you know, your passcode or whatever it is. It's, it's strictly, it strictly sees if you're wearing a mask and then triggers this system. That's a little different than the way um, Google does it on Android. Uh, for many years, they've had this thing called trusted devices. And what that does is when you pair something via Bluetooth, whether it's a pair of headphones or a watch or, or something else, um, you can choose to say, this is a trusted device. This is a device that I wear all the time. It's mine. And mm -hmm. your phone will stay unlocked as long as those, those things are paired and on. That's not what's happening here. Your phone will still lock. Your phone will still unlock the normal way unless in, only in this one instance. Okay. Got it. So it'll be useful pretty much only if you are using Face ID. Is it going to be for any iPhone that has Face ID? I mean, obviously some of them yeah, don't have yeah. them, but so um, it's, it's not just it's gonna for, be like the 12. You, it's, you know, yeah, it's for, um, right. All the phones that have uh, a Face ID and also watch OS, uh, not watch, uh, uh, watch series three and, and later. So okay. series zero, one and two are not part of it. Cool. Because you need watch OS 7 point, uh, whatever it is. Not going to save me from when I use Apple Pay at the grocery store, though. No. I still have it, to answer my password. Yeah, it's not going to work with anything other than unlocking. It's only for that strict purpose. But if you're looking up something, like, I, you know, this happens to me all the time. You're in the grocery store. You, you want to check a price. You want to check a, 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 a list, anything. The one place that yeah. this gets me every time. And, I, and then, you know, yeah. I'll have something in my hands and I'm, I'm trying to type. My, like, it's just, this is just, you know, it's a simple little thing, but it's it's going to make a world of difference to a lot of us. I just wish it, it was here last summer, but, you know, I'll take what I can get. Do we, do we have any idea whether Apple would consider doing this without the Apple Watch? Like maybe for, is there technology out there, say for the iPhone 13 in the fall, where you might be able to do a, a face scan with a mask and that would, it would work like it does now? Well, you can kind of do that if you want. You can set it's up- It's less secure, secure, right? You can, well, I mean, technically, you can set up a second face and yeah. do like, like people do like half a mask and then they do another with half a mask. And, you know, it's like, they, there are workarounds. Okay. This is a kind of a, a, a quick, easy, very seamless, very secure way to make sure you can, you can unlock your phone quickly when you're wearing a mask. Uh, will it work with other watches? Absolutely not, never. <laughs> so your Garmin watch is still going to be a paperweight, sir. Yeah, hey, <laughs> settle down. So what else is in 14.5 that we need to know about, Michael? Uh, my favorite feature is um the ipad when you have a docked and you restart it, it the apple logo will be the right oh, way you've got the horizontal finally apple, right finally. i'm sure that's yeah. so important yeah it is because it, it always is kind of, like it is it, very it, jarring to, to, to it i did. get what mike it, talking about it's yeah. it's it was such a ridiculous thing like for years uh you would restart and and the logo is you know the apple size yeah and it's just like come on man apple has such a such a high attention to detail and they just they kept doing that. So now it, when you restart and it's docked, it will switch. Now ho let's hope that's a precursor to putting the camera in the right spot too, which would be right above that logo on the long end, not over here. Cause when it's sideways, you're looking like this. Would you want it permanently like that? Yeah, yeah. Notch in the side? It's a, it's, a, it's a landscape device. Let's just stop pretending it's portrait please. Cause it's not. Yeah, it's true. You're it's right. Not, it, it hasn't been forever. And yeah. yet, the, every the other way tablet, I use it. You're right. Every, yeah. every tablet has it in the right spot, except except the damn iPad, <laughs> which everybody has. Uh, but it. I'm hoping that uh, in the next, you know, now that they've done this, maybe they'll realize most people use it landscape and they'll add that camera where it's supposed to be. We'll see. They'll make a big deal out of it if they do. It'll be, um, you know, they'll say like, oh, and we're the first person to ever think of how wonderful this this new feature is. Now with a new horizontal knob, <laughs> only only an extra ninety nine bucks, uh, you know, to upgrade. 
You, <laughs> beyond the you, usual price, I mean. You, you're also getting um, emoji search, which is another head scratchingly. Why didn't they have that before? They have it on the Mac. They have it on the iPhone. They didn't have it on the iPad. So now you you'll, you'll have a search bar when you bring up that floating emoji window, mm -hmm. and you can just search like you know whatever you want. So that's that's two small but very important features for the iPad. I'm curious a little bit about um, any sort of, I'm just seeing, and we'll link this uh, below after the fact, once once we're no longer live, we're on LinkedIn and we're on YouTube. If you head over to YouTube, you'll get um, all of the links posted. And just another plug, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat on LinkedIn or on YouTube, um, or live on Computer World's LinkedIn and live on IDG Tech Talk YouTube channel. There's this 5G dual SIM support. Yeah. Is that going to affect a lot of people? Who's using that? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> okay. it's, it's, it, it would be useful if people yeah. were traveling, but right. no one's traveling. Sure. Now. There, there's, there's that part. There's people who have a work number and a personal number on their, on their main device. Gotcha. I mean, the, the bigger issue is that 5G isn't really all that prevalent right now anyway. Yeah. Sure. But, um, you know, when you buy a thousand dollar phone, you want it to have every feature that you need. So I, this is a, it's weird that they, this didn't exist at launch because it did exist in China, just yeah. not in the US. It's, it's odd. But um, yeah, so if you use the dual SIM support on the iPhone uh, 12, any of them, it won't default to LTE anymore. It'll, it'll give you 5G on both slots. So yay. We like that. <laughs> You'll get slightly faster feet speeds in some situations. <laughs> not, in, not in North Carolina. No 5G <laughs> around. I, I, no. I have 5G here and Zero. I, I wouldn't know the difference. It's, no. it's just, I mean, you know, that's, that's somewhat to say that LTE is very fast. But it's also to say that the real 5G, the standalone networks, the the, uh, the millimeter wave stuff, uh, we we're not seeing that yet. Sure. So you've got 5G. You're paying for 5G, and not I'm not really. paying for it per se. It, it, uh, Verizon launched their nationwide 5G, gotcha. and every like it added it to all the plans. So I didn't I didn't upgrade. I didn't have the upgrade. So I don't get millimeter wave. If I want to get that, I would have to pay. But um, it's such a small area near me. Like there's there's one uh, I don't know maybe a mile or two away from me, but it's just, it's not worth paying for right now. That's super fast. I did test it and that's like, you know, 1.5 gigs a second. It's crazy. Oh, but, uh, I want that. House, I, want, yeah. I want to go to there. Yes. Totally. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's, it. it's awesome. But around my house, I'm getting like 75, which, you know, to be fair, is very fast, yeah, but it's about easy. as fast as LTE was, is so, but yeah, 5G uh, dual SIM. Um, also uh, Fitness Plus, if you use Fitness Plus, you'll be able to airplay to a TV, which is another feature that I don't know why it wasn't there at launch. So right now you can use it on your iPhone, you can use it on your iPad, you can use it on your Apple TV. You can't stream it to another device that has AirPlay. So you have to have an Apple TV on your television. To, gotcha. To, um, now you can, you know, there's a lot of AirPlay devices. So with 14.5, you'll be able to look on your phone and beam it to a TV because if you've ever tried to work out using a phone, it is not fun. No. So this mm -hmm. is, you know, you need it, you need it on a, on a TV, whether it's like, you know, yoga or stretching or strength or whatever you're doing. Um, it's, it's not a good experience on the phone. So that, that's, that's another overdue feature. This is kind of like a, like a mop-up release, like all the things that should have come out maybe three months ago are, 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 are coming now. Yeah. How long has some of this stuff been in the pipeline? I, you know, I don't know. Cause these are the, the, we, Right, like the Apple rumor mill doesn't really get too deep into software. Sure. Uh, unless it's like um, like someone's digging into one of the betas and they find something. Like, for example, in 14.5, uh, 9 to 5 Mac found references to um, an Apple card feature where you would be able to have two users on the same card. Right now you can't do that. Um, so that's something that's probably in 14.6 or, 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 or later. But these features, you know, Apple develops them and they don't really leak because there's nothing to leak to. You know, we get manufacturing leaks, we get, we get inventory release, channel re uh, leaks for iPhones and all their other products. Software, yeah. you know, it's developed in, in house. So iOS, like you don't really, you know, there'll be high end like iOS 15 features, like to say, oh, we heard this, we heard that. But this kind of like minutia, it, it doesn't really leak very often. So th these are all surprises, at least to me, they were. Yeah, I agree. Well, so I guess the big question is, 
when when can we all use it and when can anyone who wants to try out the beta version yeah the beta um, uh, if you're a developer or you pay for a developer account um, you can get it now uh, the public beta didn't land yet uh, usually it's shortly thereafter so probably next week maybe the week after but definitely soon um, as far as the actual wide release my guess is mid-march Maybe, maybe, maybe I would have said early March. March. Maybe so. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, know, it's, it's, it's a around guess. there, around there. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be a few weeks. It'll go, you know, beta one, beta two, beta three, and then it'll release something like that. There's a, there's a lot here and there's a lot of like front facing features, so to speak. So it'll go through several rounds of, of beta uh, testing to, to, to get it right. But, um, you know, we've tried it at Macworld. Um, we, we have a developer account and, you know, the watch stuff works great and everything, everything seems to be, you know, in order and working. And right. yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a big one. It'll be fun. Uh, there's a couple other little things like, you know, uh, Apple news plus, uh, there's a search bar, uh, Apple music has a, has some stuff, you know, little, little things, little enhancements that people will, will notice uh, along with all the usual bug fixes and security things and things like that. Great, really exciting. But importantly to note, um, I'm just checking out this article also from Macworld. The app tracking transparency, that's not gonna be immediately available in the beta, right? Uh, in, I don't know, we don't know. Okay, okay. My, my, probably not because, you know, developers need to get on board and stuff. Like it's, 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 it's not gonna yeah. be a switch, like it's, it's a switch, it's like it's a literal switch. But the apps need to be updated, just like the the privacy labels that that landed in I think it was fourteen point two. It's that type of thing. So, like as each app gets updated, that's when these things will kick in. So, sure. um, it's not like the Apple thing where you the Apple Watch thing where you flip a switch and you can use it. You're still going to have to go into the settings and turn off all those things if you want uh, for the for the prompts. It, it they'll happen when when apps are updated and, and then launched for the first time. So, Great. as far as it being like. Apple hasn't said mm -hmm. when this is going to be available. I think they the the only quote they gave was that it would be like early spring, which is mid March. So it'll be around the time this comes out. Cool. Well, and we actually make a big have deal out of it when it when it does. We actually have one great question over on YouTube. Donnie asked, "Great show, thank you. Any chance? This is a fun question. Any chance there will ever be location based automatic unlocking on iPhones?" Thank it you, Donnie. That's a very so good yeah, question. Reverse geofencing. So we're, that's we're another using. that's another Android thing. They have trusted locations, trusted devices, trusted places uh, places, not locations. Um, I mean, that would be great. I would love to have my I phone to, yeah, unlocked in my house in. when I'm connected to my Wi-Fi. There's a lot of yeah, that's a, a great those, point. Those, those features, but Apple was very reluctant to do those types of things. Uh, maybe. I mean, that's, that's, that's my best guess is, yeah, I think they could do it in a secure way, but, um, they're, you know, they'll, they're, they have to weigh the way the pros and cons and whether or not it's worth it for the criticism well, they get or, or, or the potential privacy issues that are. Bingo. I was just going to say, right. you know, it, when it comes down to privacy and security, I think Apple, while yes, technically they could do it, you've got to balance that whole convenience versus privacy security and Apple tends to come down on that privacy security yeah. side. They I, usually I, err I, on the side of caution. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But so I possible, would, I would but like, not anytime soon. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I have it on my Android phones all the time. It's, it's fantastic. Because you know, unlocking is a pain. Even with Face ID, you still got to look the right way. And you know, it's it's it would be easier if I could pick up my phone and start using it in, yeah. in any instance. But um, I think it's it, it it'll be a little bit if that ever comes to pass. Maybe when Fair we enough. get those those glasses or, or an Apple Car, it'll it'll work. Twenty two, twenty twenty two. A car in twenty twenty two? No, car no, no, in no, no. twenty thirty two. Car, you know. <laughs> I'll probably not be driving by the time that thing arrives, but uh, that's, that's a ways out. Yeah. Well, you may maybe you won't even need to be driving it yourself, though, so it won't matter. Oh, what's the point of having? It'll a be car? autonomous. The joy is in the driving. No, no. Uh, maybe for you, not for me. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you both so much for calling in, joining us live. I think this is a lot of fun. We'll be going live a lot more regularly. So, to our audience, thank you so much for watching. If you have any um, unanswered questions or burning questions as we're wrapping up here, still leave them in the chat, and we'll try our best to get back to you 
almost certainly get back to you. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Mike. And thank you all so much. Once again, if you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're over on LinkedIn or on YouTube, if you want to go over and subscribe to our channel on YouTube, that would be awesome. You can hit the bell icon in the corner so you're notified every single time we post a new video. Let us know once again, if you have any other questions or comments and thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.